Good afternoon. We are here today to celebrate Dr. Clarence Jeep Jones and also there you go. <laughs> and also unveil the square right here in this corner. Um, it's very well deserved, obviously. Uh, Dr. Clarence Jones, as we all know, was a pillar here in this community. He served a brief tour in Korea, but one thing that Dr. Jones has proven is that you don't need to wear a uniform to come back and serve your community. And he proved that in many ways, and everybody here is a testament to that. He was also a trailblazer, being the first black deputy mayor here in the great city of Boston. And right now we also have another trailblazer. And it's my honor to introduce the first black mayor and the first women mayor here in the city of Boston, yeah. Madam Mayor Kim Janey. Also would like to welcome Ambassador Flynn and his son, Counselor Ed Flynn, for being here as well. And also, of course, the Jones family. And there's Miss Wanda Jones right here herself, another great pillar of our community. But before we get started, I'm going to pass it to Pastor Arthur Gerald from the 12th Baptist Church to open it up with a prayer. Praise the Lord, and may we reverence God in whatever way you are accustomed to do so. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, we are grateful and thankful for this beautiful day that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it as we dedicate this monument to a son of this city. Dr. Clarence Jack Jr. Jeep Jones had a humble beginning on Oakburn Ave, but reached unparalleled heights in the city government as deputy mayor of the city of Boston. He will forever be affectionately known, as the Bible says in Proverbs 18:24 a friend who sticks closer than a brother. We are abundantly and eternally thankful for the many lives Jeeves touched and helped along the way so that we can declare today that his living was not in vain. And now may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all as we dedicate this site to a living legend in our hearts, this community, and this city forever and ever to the glory of God. Amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Shout it out again. God bless you. Amen. Uh, for, those, for the few who don't know, um, I'm Commissioner Rob Santiago, Veterans Commissioner, and it was definitely our honor to ensure that this dedication uh, happens today. Now, right now, is another honor of me to introduce our mayor, Mayor Kim Janey. Good afternoon, everyone. I think you can do better than that. Good afternoon. I want to thank everyone uh, for being here. I certainly want to recognize Commissioner Santiago for your leadership uh, in the city of Boston. I want to recognize our clergy that are here with us today, particularly our clergy uh, from the historic 12th Baptist Church, which is my home church and the church family of Clarence Jeep Jones. I want to thank, yes, we can give it up for that. We've got Reverend Willie Broderick here. Pastor Gerald Emeritus is here. Certainly Reverend Jeffrey Brown is here. I also want to acknowledge Pastor Art Gordon from St. John's, who is also here, and all of the faith-based uh, leaders. I want to recognize Ambassador Flynn and thank him for his leadership. He has a lifetime of leadership for, for the city of Boston, in the city of Boston. Please give a loud round of applause for Ambassador Flynn. I also want to recognize Boston City Councilor uh, Eddie Flynn, who was following in his footsteps, and Boston City Councilor Michelle Wu has just arrived. I want to thank her for being here. I want to especially lift up the Jones family. 
and my dear friend, Wanda Jones. She, like Jeep, uh, has made Roxbury her home and has contributed so much to this community. She has been a good friend and a mentor. Uh, we all know that, that Jeep, as a son of Roxbury, has done so much, not just for this community, but for the entire city of Boston, whether that is his service uh, as, as uh, serving in the Korean War and, and being a, a hero uh, and a veteran, and we certainly lift him up whether that is his service to the city of Boston leading the BRA or being deputy mayor for the city of Boston. He has paved the way for so many who have come uh, after him, and we are all here to pay homage to him. And I want to just recognize his family, his, his loving wife, uh, his many children, his grandchildren, nieces and nephews. There are so many folks from all across, and his, sis, and his sisters, his siblings, yes. Uh, there are so many people here, community leaders, Ms. Harris, Charlie Titus. I, I can't even, I won't even start naming folks because I'll be sure to miss uh, some folks. He has touched so many people. He has set such an important example. And I certainly stand on his shoulders as a daughter of Roxbury. And I'm really proud here to be here today to dedicate this corner as a hero square to remember his leadership and his legacy in the city of Boston and especially in this community. It is well deserved. And we have a proclamation that I will just like to read and I'd like to ask you to join me, Wanda. This is a, a proclamation from the city of Boston, whereas Clarence Jeep Jones dedicated his life to his community and city, and whereas Jeep Jones and Reverend Haynes formed a mentoring program at the Norfolk House in the 1950s. Jeep Jones continued serving the community after leaving City Hall. Jeep Jones also walked Warren Gardens with Pastor Gerald to listen to residents and residents' concerns, and whereas Jeep Jones became director of the Youth Activities Commission in 1969, saying, I know it's impossible. I'd like to know personally every kid in this city, just demonstrating his commitment to young people. And whereas, Jeep Jones served in many other roles, including as deputy mayor and chairman of the Boston Redevelopment Authority, always putting residents first. And whereas, Jeep Jones was also a man of great faith, serving as a trustee and deacon at the historic 12th Baptist Church, Jeep Jones helped many people and continues to be an example to all of us. Now, therefore, I, Kim Janey, Mayor of the City of Boston, do hereby proclaim August 6, 2021, to be Dr. Clarence Jeep Jones Day in the city of Boston. And I urge, and I urge all residents of Boston to join me in celebrating his legacy to the city of Boston and all of its residents. Wanda, thank you so much for continuing on, for being such a good friend and a good partner and a good leader in this community. We all are here to lift up the legacy of Jeep, to remember him, and his legacy lives on, not only in you and his children and his grandchildren, but every single person that he has touched in the city of Boston. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Thank you very much. We are now going to hear from a beloved treasure in the city of Boston, someone who has a big legacy here in our city, who continues to lead. He continues to lead in this city, and it is a pleasure to call him friend. I want to welcome the ambassador, Ray Flynn, to the podium. As we welcome Ambassador Flynn, also wanted to recognize uh, City Councilor Andrea Campbell, who's here. She just arrived. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here as we dedicate this square 
to my longtime friend. I think I was eight years old when I started going over to the Norfolk house. And Jeep was over there, so was Mike Haynes. And so was uh, Walter Byers. Remember Walter Byers, the great fighter? <laughs> Where's the firefighter? Right here. Jeep, Jeep was a very special guy, I have to tell you. I go way, way back, way, way back with him, as I mentioned. But one of the great experiences that I had in life, not only playing basketball over the Norfolk house, but being the first white kid to ever play for the Bruins, Moulton's Bruins. They were coached by Jack Crump. And they had the best basketball team all around the city. And we used to get in the car in a station wagon, and we used to drive down in, down a, a New Jersey into Connecticut and Rhode Island, and we'd all be in the, the beach wagon. And Jeep would be there, and Mel King, and. Roscoe Baker, all these guys who became lifelong friends of mine long before I thought of getting into politics. They were very, very special people. And my son Eddie and I came over here to see Jeep when he was not doing so well. And we probably had the best conversation about Boston and how good the community was because of the people and the people from this neighborhood and neighborhoods throughout the city. Hard-working, decent people that you couldn't help but love. And Jeep was the icon of, of th that group of political leaders. So I, I have to say that I'm very honored to be here with my son, Eddie. And matter of fact, I was getting in the car to come over, and Michael Flaherty, the city council, said, Make sure you mention my name over there. I says, I will. So I did that, <laughs> if you see him. So my friends, you know, you think it's a politician speaking when I tell you my affection and my love for Jeep Jones. But I'm not running for anything. And I'm just here. I'm just about hanging in there. But I wanted to be here to tell you how much Jeep Jones meant to this city. He was an icon in this city. You know, this is wonderful, Kim, naming the square after him. But you know what? If I had my way, they'd name it the, the Faneuil Hall or John Hancock Hall. You know what? I might even name the Boston Garden after Jeep Jones. He, he was such a, such a wonderful, wonderful guy. God bless you, Jeep. We love you. Oh, that was awesome. Um, now offering the remarks for the family is one of Jeep's sons, uh, Michael Jones. Good afternoon, everyone. We, the family of Dr. Clarence Jeep Jones, would like to thank the city of Boston, Mayor Kim Janey, and the Veterans Association for making this event happen. My father, in his humility, would probably not have wanted this to take place. He would have been satisfied knowing that he was able to help someone out. Over our lifetimes, we've heard many people say, your father helped me do this, or your father helped me do that. In fact, there are many people here today that have their own Jeep Jones stories. Jeep lived a life of servitude and making sure that through his efforts that he would do whatever he could to make someone else's, life, someone else's life easier. I pray that this dedication today, that his spirit will live on in all of us as we help those in need and humbly serve one another. Once again, thank you and God bless you. Like Michael said, there's a lot of people here who have uh, stories about Jeep Jones. One person who definitely has a lot of stories and I gotta tell him that he needed to keep it short is a family friend, uh, Azil Martin, who wants to say some remarks. Azil? Azil. 
Azel, Azel Martin, sorry. There he is. Keep it short. <laughs> Just stick us a uh, Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's an honor to be here to say a few words in regards to my mentor, Jeep Jones. Um, as a young man growing up in Orchard Park, projects, that's what it was back then. Um, and going to English High, I had a scholarship to University of Mexico for track, but being of a uh, single parent, my mother was a single parent, we didn't have bus fare to send me to Mexico. So up, cup, up comes Jeep Jones. I don't even know how he knew me because he was a basketball guy. And he came down and called me outside and said, uh, I got a scholarship for you to Winston-Salem. So at that point, I was kind of upset by not being able to go to Mexico. And I said, I'm not going. Jeep hit me in the stomach <laughs> real quick, and I fell to my knees. And when I got up, he told my mother, I want him on the next bus out of here. And Jeep Jones paid my bus fare to Winston-Salem. So everything that I have accomplished in my life today is because of Jeep Jones. Saw something in me that I didn't see at that time. And Jeep has always been a, a mentor to a lot of us out here today. And I'm glad you guys gave me the honor of standing here and giving my story. And um, I also want to say to the family that we've always kept you in our prayers and we will continue to keep you in our prayers. And I thank you so much for letting me speak today. Thank you. Now, last person, our last speaker today, she needs no introduction. Mrs. Wanda Jones. There she is. I just want to thank everybody for coming. And everybody here knows the thing about Jeep that he most did, he gave love. He loved his community, he loved his school, and most of all, he loved his family. So basically, I just want to thank the city for doing this honor for him, which is everybody knows is very well deserved. And I want to thank you all for coming. Thank you. That's it. Uh, Ms. Jones, Mrs. Jones, if you could please come up here, I want to present you a replica of Dr. Clarence Jeep Jones Square, Madam Mayor.